Hi, welcome to my farm kitchen. In today's video, I'm gonna make berry lime jam. All right, so I have a freezer full of blackberries, red raspberries, and black raspberries. And I've made blackberry lime jam before and it is delicious. So I'm thinking, why can't I mix all three berries together and make a mixed berry lime jam? That's what I'm gonna to try to do today. <laughs> so I started out with three gallons of berries. I had a gallon of blackberries, a gallon of red raspberries, and a gallon of black raspberries. And I split them evenly between the two pots. I'm gonna have two batches going at once. Like. Mm -hmm. It's just a pile of berries. See, there's black raspberries, down mm. there's red raspberries, and on the bottom there's blackberries. Mm. Plus all their juice. Nice. Okay, before I start making it, I actually put five little plates in the freezer so I can do the test later to see if it's thick enough. Now you might be wondering if I'm making berry jam, why are the apples on the island? There's actually apples in this recipe. And all you do is chop them up into rough pieces, put it in with the berries, and get it all cooked down. After it cooks down, we put it through my handy dandy Johnny applesauce maker to get rid of all the seeds and the peels and everything. Oh, so this is actually a recipe, not a Brenda creation? It's a recipe, but the recipe is for blackberry lime. I'm gonna turn into mixed berry lime. Oh, so this is an original then? Well, kind of, yeah. <laughs> it's an experiment. But if blackberry lime turned out so amazing, how could this, how could this not turn out good? And it really is good jam. And I have a freezer full of berries. Now, this is one of our apples from our apple trees. There's a little bit of bad spot in the middle, so I will just cut the bad spot out and use the rest. It recommends a tart apple like uh, Granny Smith. And I forget what kind of apple this is. I think, actually, this is the apple off of our old tree in the backyard that we don't know what it is, but it's very tart, so I figure it would work. It's the one we did the video on three years oh, ago. Oh yeah, trimming the apple tree. The old apple tree. The old apple tree. And for the first time this year, we got a lot of, we're getting a lot of apples. We picked some, but we still have a lot more to pick. Well, we got some in other years. We just didn't know how to manage the, now. Uh, all the, the bugs and uh, <laughs> the, the ways it gets attacked. Bugs and birds and every other kind of critter that wants to eat our apples. We just have to fight them, not let them get our apples. I think some of these are Golden Supreme. I got a few of these from our orchard too. It's a mix. Some are Granny Smith and some are a mix of other things. So the apples are in there though for a reason? Other well, than for taste? pectin and also I guess it gives some flavor too, but it, it, apples do have a lot of pectin. Now blackberries I think have a lot of pectin too, but the recipe calls for apples and that's what I've done before. So I'll just keep doing what works. Well, I notice when you buy juices, oftentimes it's like a berry juice but it'll have a lot of apples in it, kind of at the base. Ah, maybe. I don't know much about that. Maybe I'll try that someday. We haven't done much juicing. No, maybe uh, we need to get a cider that, press. Hey, that would be cool. Making cider with our own apples. I'm just so excited that we're getting our own fruit this year. That is a thrill. Peaches didn't last long, did they? No, well, we only got a few between the bugs finally got the bugs under control. Then the birds started eating them before they even got ripe. So it's a battle to try to get fruit, but the peaches that we did manage to get, we had to pick them before they were ripe so the birds didn't get them. But they were delicious. They were amazing. They ripened, most of them ripened off the tree and turned out delicious. A couple of them did not ripen well and just kind of Well, um, they looked beautiful. Shrunk. They were beautiful red. Yes, they did. And they were softening up. They just weren't 100% right. Peaches are my favorite favorite fruit. So I'm thinking we need to plant more peach trees. Don't you think? Yeah. All right, so I'm going to put half the apples in each pot. I'm actually making a quadruple batch. So each pot has a double batch in. So now, let's just put the apples in, stir it all around, let it start cooking, and let everything soften up. So it's mainly waiting for the apples to cook down. Now, I don't know if I mentioned, I started with frozen berries. 
with the farm stand, we sell the best berries and then we take the seconds and freeze them. And then later, when I have time, I turn them into something, whether it be jam, syrup, pie filling, whatever I feel like making that day. So now I just have to let it cook. Stir it once in a while. Ooh, I'm gonna make a mess. But then I usually do, don't I? I was gonna say, not the first one. <laughs> but that's what you have me for. And that's why I have the towel down here. Because I always make a mess. I didn't have the pan close enough, but it's still gonna drip. So as you see, it's time to put it through my Johnny applesauce maker. I forgot I need my special plunger. My kraut pounder that Donnie made. Works perfectly in this thing. And when I get the seeds and everything out the other end, I'm actually going to put it through twice. <laughs> I just splashed myself. <laughs> I want all the pulp and goodness I can get. Coming out already? No, oh, yeah. There it goes. That looks like a good pie filling. <laughs> well, oh, what the stuff coming out the other side? I know that it's. Uh... The recipe talked about using that part to make blackberry gin or blackberry um, vinegar. I don't know how. I don't know how to do that. Making hooch. Yeah, I don't know how how you would do that. So I don't think I'll be able to use that for anything okay. other than compost. Everything gets used as compost. I'm sure it'd be good fiber for your system there. <laughs> That'd be intense fiber. This smells good. I yes. mean. Oh, I mean, the combination amazing. of all the berries and the apples, it is amazing. <sighs> the process was delayed a little bit here, wasn't it? <laughs> Somebody had to go bail hay. So I had everything cooked down. It just was able to sit and wait until you got here. But from here on out, once you get going, you kind of have to keep going. It's a nice summer, 90 degree day. Perfect day for making hay. Huh. And I'm going to do both pots as far as putting them through this uh, Johnny Applesauce maker. But then I'm going to start the one pot of jam a little bit before the second one because I don't want them to both get ready exactly the same time. I have two canners, so I can can quite a bit at one time. But I don't want one pot to be ready and have to sit and wait. So I'm going to try to keep like a half hour, 45 minutes between the ends of the batches. We'll see how it goes. That's the plan. About done. Getting there with the first batch. And we'll see how it goes. All right, let's see how it splashes there. My wonderful assistant. There you go. Okay, so now I have all the pulp and the juice. It's time to add the sugar and the lime juice and start cooking so it. So you're only doing the one? Yes, one? I'm going to do one pot, get it mostly underway, almost to canning, and then start the second pot because I don't want them both to be done at the same time waiting to be canned. Okay. So I'll get the whole first batch canned and hopefully this one will just start cooking then. That look like now. Like very sweet, yummy blackberry, raspberry. So it's got pulp in it. So is, that, is this a jam or a jelly? It's a jam technically because it has pulp. It doesn't have pieces of fruit, so it's not preserved, but it does have the pulp. That's why when I did that uh, Johnny Applesauce maker, I put the stuff through twice. After the seeds and the miscellaneous stuff came out the bad spot, I put that through again and got a lot of good berry pulp out of it. Yeah. And I want all that. So I just have to cook this till it reaches a rolling boil. And then you boil it for five minutes. You check it with one of the frozen plates to see if it's firm enough to can. If it's not, you keep going every three minutes and check it until it's firm enough to can. So now I just gotta make sure it doesn't burn on the bottom while it's getting up to a rolling boil. Cool. 
All right, so what's this? Time for test number two. I gave it an additional three minutes. Right pot, left pot. Let it sit for a minute and see what it does. Okay. Test number two, it's pretty close. I just want to give it two or three more minutes and then I'm going to jar it up. So what's that you just dropped in there? I just put in the lime zest. That's the last thing you do. You stir in the lime zest. How much is that? Lime um, zest? I forget. I have it in the recipe, but uh, I split it between these two pots. Okay, it's ready to jar up. The fun part. So is this the fun part? This is the fun part. Well, other than eating it. That's the most fun part. But yeah, this is the cool part. And hopefully they all set. The plate test is usually pretty good. If it sets on the plate like that, that's what it'll be when it cools. I mean, it takes a bit of faith because when you look at it right now, it's totally runny. So you have some faith that it's actually going to set up. Now some of those need a little more. It's supposed to be a quarter inch head space. So I'll have to put a little bit more in some. Whoops, I got too much in him. Oh dear. Yep. I'll take some out of that one and put it in the other ones. Our house smells wonderful. All right, now comes the taste test. And we actually didn't film everything that happened with this jam. <laughs> the first batch didn't set up right. Um, so not everything goes perfectly no, on the homestead, the farm. It always doesn't. It, yeah, it doesn't quite often. So I actually had to recook it, empty it out of the jars, unseal them, and recook it and put a little bit of pectin in it. And that set up beautifully the second time. So I now have quite a few jars of mixed berry jam, or he wants to call it. What do you want to call it? I forget. Bramble berry. Because it's all they're all brambles. Black raspberry, red raspberry, and blackberry are all brambles. I think that's a catchy name. Bramble berry. Bramble berry jam. Well whatever. It's yummy jam with a hint of lime. Now we'll see if it tastes good. All right. Certainly spreads good like real. So it's kid kid safe. Yeah. Not gonna it's fall set off. this time. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I taste the lime. It's just a little bit of lime. I like that. That adds something to it. So, that was a worthy project. It's very good. I don't taste the good. lime till like the back end. Yeah, I taste a little bit. Yeah. Um, it was great because it got rid of three bags of fruit in the freezer. I got like 24 jars, I think, of jam to sell at the farm stand or to eat. <laughs> yeah. And it was fun to do, even though I had to process it twice. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, I like canning. So thanks for joining us in our Brambleberry Jam experiment. We'll see you in our next video. Bye-bye.